Jackson. Which gave the women a 30 second head start in a seafood tower challenge. Hello. Hang on, we're telling more followers to join your video. Hello? <clears throat> oh. Hey, easy. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. It's been a long day. Yes, I'm sure. I saw you on Fox 5 this morning. Yes, 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 yes. I was on there and uh, simultaneously yeah, on the radio at the same time. Huh? It's another day in the life. Yes, yes. It's still my connection still says waiting for you. So I can hear you, but I can't see you yet. Which is oh, weird. Really? That's nice. Oh, okay. I see you, and sometimes that does happen. Um, I'm not sure. So I tell you what, let me go back out and come back in, okay? Okay, okay. Bring me right back. All right. <clears throat> Cancel. Oh, okay, good. So, hey, everybody. Oh, the Wealth Syndicate. Syndicate. I know him. Okay, here comes Easy again. And go live with Easy. Hopefully, this will work this time. There you okay. are. Emma, can you see me now? I can see you now. I can see you now. Can you see me now? Can you see me now? Verizon seeing me now? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. I'm doing great. Yeah, just uh, staying very busy. Mm -hmm. It's a very busy time, and, uh, you know, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. You know, just despite everything that, you know, we're going through in the country with, you know, the coronavirus, with the uh, unrest we're going on with the protests with George Floyd and all these multiple, you know, killings going on in our community and, okay. and the black-on-black -black crime in our community. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm still blessed and highly favored. Yep. Yes, and, yeah. And still yeah. very thankful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You got to wake up and just thank God no matter what's going on. Because, you yep. know, I mean, really, it's just I, I, I look at this time and I, I think, you know, all of this is happening for a reason. It's it's mm -hmm. it's happening for a reason, and it and it's and and there's a message in all of this, and as I um, see my purpose, or I think everybody's purpose is individual, and they're gonna find what they're supposed to do next out of all of this, and it's gonna mm -hmm. and it's gonna I, I think it's gonna be positive, but I think that um, it's really gonna affect um, our small business, um, you know, uh, our small business owners. Uh, because everybody's, um, it's unfortunate. I, I heard some statistics today about 60% of the businesses that um, have had to close their doors are not going to come back. And that's such right. a sad story. It's, it's, you know, it's unfortunate. I, th I look at the coronavirus, I feel nervous about leaving the house, but then it's like, you can't be nervous. You know, we got to get back to some sort of some uh, normalcy, but you got to be careful. But it's, um, you know, I, you hear so many different things and um it can uh it can it can it can be daunting but i just think that we gotta stay positive we gotta find a way to stay positive out of all of this so yes you know uh the great sun tzu in the book art of war said there's always an opportunity in a crisis situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and you have to be looking for that. And, you know, some people shut down and put on shades and, you know, uh, go in the dark instead of trying to be like, you know what? I need to be figuring things out. And, and the reality of it is African-American people, you know, we have had this, uh, there's an actual thing called a resilient gene mm -hmm. um, in our DNA mm -hmm. that we always find a way. Beyonce got a whole album about this. It's called Lemonade. That, you know, we're able to make, you know, they gave us lemons and we made lemonade. That's right. Well, that DNA is in all of us. And you see this throughout the diaspora, any place that mm -hmm. you travel, yeah. you know, black throughout, people. Will, I mean, throughout yeah, slavery. I mean, yeah, we will, we will set up a business and we will get something popping. So, that's right. you know, that's we right. just got to kind of like, you know, hey, look, you know, this is what it is. How can I benefit? And, you know, one example of that is this. Um, so when the coronavirus hit, uh, there was a lady that lived in Southern Maryland who sold some kind of Jamaican rum mm -hmm. or some kind of Jamaican drink or something like that. Right. And she said, well, hmm, you know, people are social distancing. I can't, my, I can't sell my product. What can I sell? You know mm -hmm. what she came up with? A hand sanitizer. And that mm -hmm. stuff is going off the shelf like crazy. Yeah. I bought a bottle myself at the UPS store. She ended up on WHUR getting free advertising. And wow. you just got to kind of, you know, that, like I said, in every crisis situation, there is an opportunity and mm -hmm. you have to be looking for that mm -hmm. and, and, regardless of what. And it gives us an opportunity as business owners because um, you cannot go into entrepreneurship thinking that your business is going to remain the same from the time that you begin. As, as Just like we have to change with technology has been changing coronavirus is only forcing us to change and adapt right. to something new as we have to adjust to new um changes in it and, and 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 the technology that keeps continues to change it's the same situation we just have to it's just that it's it, it, it's it, it's just that there's so much you know i mean we're dealing with health issues now a health crisis that's kind of is clouding our minds and our judgment. We have to get through that fear and just, and we have to figure it out. We have to learn how to adjust, step, take a step back, retool, rethink. What else can I do to survive, to make money? What can I do in my business? You, you weren't, I wasn't always going to, you're not always going to sell this one color of lipstick. They right. cosmetic companies change all the time. So it's it's no different. Right. The key word is adaptability. Mm -hmm. Adaptability. So I see Julie right there. She said pivot. Pivot. <laughs> we gonna talk about what this book did for me and what it means in our discussion today because okay. that's exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know, since we got a few people on, I just wanted to just introduce myself because I know a lot of people that may be following you may not know who I am. My name is Denise Smith, and um, I host a, a television show called Level Up on uh, Prince George's County's uh, public access station called, uh, we'll call Level, called Level Up. And it's all about helping small businesses learn how to start, run, and grow their business, okay? And then when the coronavirus came, the, slow, the show's production of the show slowed down. So I wanted to continue the momentum and and see and and just have conversations with successful business owners to see what they're doing to get through this time um to share their stories to share information information is power and i love talking with people who are willing to share the information because not all people are willing to share they want to keep it to themselves mm. but um but but which is why i i i i i love um, talking to you easy because you're always um, willing to just give out useful information. So I brought on, I asked easy to come on today and talk about how he um, was able to uh, pivot in his business. I mean, because you didn't start out, you started out one way and now you're doing something different. And I wanted you to come on and share your story and, 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 and so that people can draw strength from you. Okay. You ready to get started? Yes, sir. Okay, so of course, you know me from the radio. I've been in the radio industry for the past 30 years, multiple markets, Dallas, Philadelphia, Chicago, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., San Francisco are all the places that I've been on the air. 
Of course, I've been in D.C. for the last 25 of those years. And um, I always knew in the back of my mind that I needed to do something more than radio. It was like God was telling me, look, you're more than just this. You're more than just a guy on this microphone here talking to people <laughs> and giving away prizes. You can do more than that. And so some years ago, I decided that I would create a nonprofit. I didn't know exactly what this nonprofit was going to do. I just knew that my passion was going to be related to me working with the youth. Okay. Since high school, when I was in high school, before I even got into college, I was a co-founder of an organization called the Circle of Friends. Mm -hmm. There were a group of African-American men that came to me. They were like, well, we see you making moves. You know, we see you doing these things. You care about what's going on in the community. We're too old. Can you come oversee and, you know, spend time with these, with these young kids? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I did. And I took on this group of boys. And um, so kind of like that was kind of like the beginning of me working with youth in the first place. So I knew that I wanted to do something with youth with my nonprofit. So I decided to call it Creative Solutions for Youth. Okay. okay. And I decided that I would just, even, even though I didn't know that I was going to do what I'm doing right now, that I would keep this nonprofit alive. Okay. And I kept, I, I, I created Creative Solutions for Youth in 2005. I did not use it until, two, until 2017. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, al I always knew that I wanted to be doing something with youth. Now, a couple years ago, I also, like, my thing is, you have to go where your passions are. Mm -hmm. And me being passionate about youth and being involved in helping, you know, to uh, create solutions to some things that are going on in our society, um, you know, which is what, which what I do right now with the two government contracts that I have, and I'll break those down in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I also have a passion for, for media. I also have a passion for television and creation. And, you know, you were very instrumental in helping me with my other LLC, mm -hmm. Uh, which was CM Multimedia, where I was doing social media and producing videos uh, for companies. I was uh, running the uh, uh, social media for the nonprofit, uh, the Friendship Place, two years ago, too. Uh -huh. So um, it's funny how all these things that I, I was doing are now related to what there were steps to where I am right now as far as my other company. Uh -huh. So... Um, I knew I wanted to do something with this nonprofit. I knew I wanted to work with you. And somebody came to me one time and said, hey, Street, we know you know a lot about the music industry. We know you know a lot about the um, radio industry. Have you ever thought about teaching what you know to, re to returning citizens? Mm. And I said, you know what? I did think about that before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have a curriculum that I had written down, you know, something that I had written and just put it on the shelf. They were like, well, we want to meet with you. That's how I got the government. Con I have a federal contract okay. with C Sosa, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, ironically overseen by the administration of uh, this country. Yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah. Saying, you know who I'm talking about. I'm yeah. to say his name. Yeah. Well, say and also I have another contract through Mayor Bowser with uh, DYRS, uh, which is, of, of course, the city government. Okay. So, um, you know, lesson number one right there was positioning myself by, A, getting a nonprofit, mm -hmm. creating a nonprofit, paying that $700 to that uh, attorney in Georgetown, mm -hmm. and then getting an LLC. Mm -hmm. Because you can't conduct business without these things. Yep. You, gotta, you, you have to have them. So those were two key moves. Now, uh, you can get an LLC right now yep. for like 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. you, oh, you, of course, you talk about that all the time on your show. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very important if you want to be in business in D.C., Maryland, or Virginia, or anywhere else, you have to have your business set up in a way that, you know, you're shielded and protected. Or if you want to get into the business of service and, and getting grants and contracts from the government, you're going to have to apply. Sometimes you have to be nonprofit. So mm -hmm. that's why I got both. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about that because um, – that's 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 like my mojo right there. Government contracts okay. and and okay. and certifications, right? Yep. 
Okay. Because a lot of people, this, when we talk about government contracts and certifications, we're talking about residual income. Right. And a lot of entrepreneurs don't think about residual income. They, you know, in during this time of um, COVID-19, people who have had to close their doors or product-based businesses that haven't been able to do business, um, this is an alternative, Right. And, right. you know, and, and, and government contracting, you can have a, a contract for a period of time, a year, two years, three years, five years, depending on the contract, whereas your product, you sell in one product. Now, you, of course, you're having your returning customers and everything, but I'm, I'm just talking about the difference here between product-based business and, you know, um, your your normal mom and pop shops and coffee mm -hmm. shops and restaurants and clothing lines and everything, but then you have this government side and you and and I remember thinking I don't want to do business with the government. What I don't want to. Are you crazy? Right. They got all the money. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you don't. Think they they got the stuff. money. Right. And you don't know that the a lot of people just don't know how much money the government spends on small businesses with small businesses there's so much money to be made in government contracting so you have to position yourself to do to do that now your your contracts federal government and dc government yes. the, it, it, you know it's a tough um while I, while i'm on the radio right <laughs> And that's called multiple streams of income. We you we can't survive today without multiple streams of income. Okay. And so with government contracting, um, you know, all you need is somebody to help walk you through the process or you learn the process. But once you learn it, you got it. And and you know, I mean I got a question here. How oh wait a minute. How do you go about obtaining that contract? Okay. I'ma let you answer that question. Okay. So one thing that I'll say, and what I'm about to say to you applies to every business, whether it's service oriented with a government contract or you're providing a service, or if you want to sell water, you come up with a special water that nobody else has on the planet. Um, you have to create something, I think, that does not exist. I think that when you're trying to create something, mm -hmm. and this is what I've done. I created a music industry academy that did not exist. Nobody ever thought of using hip hop culture as a way, as a tool mm -hmm. with returning citizens to help them to learn life skills. Sure. Meaning this, the music industry academy that I created teaches them how to record songs, how to conduct themselves in interviews, how to make music videos. It teaches them um, how songs get charted, how songs get on the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, it teaches them <clears throat> vocal coaching. It teaches them breath control. But not only that, it's also, it also teaches them about job readiness, how to get jobs, how to perform you know, in a job interview setting, how to uh, keep that job for a long period of time. Um, we also teach self-awareness. Mm -hmm. I have yoga guys that come in. Uh, actually, I have a guy by the name of Akil Taft who actually works for RCA Records, and he's a yogi. So he's a, I get the double whammy out of him. <laughs> he can come and talk about how he markets Chris Brown at all these radio stations around the country. Okay. But then he breaks us off with, and I'm teaching you how to breathe, too. And, of course, we know that breath is very important. And when we're talking about returning citizens, you know, when they get in these sticky situations, the same breathing techniques that they learn with yoga are the same things that pre can prevent them from getting back into trouble because now they know how to calm themselves down. Mm -hmm. So nobody ever thought of putting all these things together mm -hmm. and providing a service. I would, I'm, the, I'm the very first person in probably in U.S. government history to ever use hip hop as a tool to reduce recidivism in youth in this country.
Mm-hmm. You need to come over to Prince George's County with that. <laughs> well, you know, we, we you, you know what? Why don't I have a contact in Prince George's County? But oh. D.C. snapped, yo, but the federal government snatched me up. They snatched me up mm -hmm. and, you know, it's been going great. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I did was I created something that didn't exist and then I positioned myself. Mm -hmm. I created a position in the marketplace that did not exist that I was able to sell to them mm -hmm. that got me the contract. So this is a book, number one, that I want to share with you, okay? It's called Repositioning mm -hmm. by Jack Trout. So the grandfather of this book is called Positioning by Jack Trout and Al Reeds. Mm -hmm. I read this book two times. And what it talks about is the product that you want to sell, you want to sell a position in somebody's mind. Mm -hmm. You want to plant a seed that, look, I'm the only guy, I'm the only person that has a program mm -hmm. that teaches returning citizens mm -hmm. about the hip hop culture, how songs get in the radio, but also uh, uh, mix it in, mixes in life skills. Mm -hmm. I created a position by using video, showing what I did in my classes, uh, producing songs and music video. Mm -hmm. So I created wow. content. Mm -hmm. And then what I would do, what I did was, I all the stuff that I was creating, I sent it all to the top. I sent it all to my bosses. And they were like, wow, you got these guys to do yoga? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, oh, what? You got Raheem Devon in your class teaching them how to perform live with live instrumentation in a church in Southeast? What? Yeah. Oh, you took them on a tour to uh, Radio 1 DC? You took them on tours to uh, WPDC and they got on the air? What? Hold on, hold on. Wait, you created a music video <laughs> and that music video got featured on WSA 9 yeah. last week with one of our students mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they played the entire music video? It's um, about creating look, a position. Wait it's a about creating look. a position in somebody's mind. And the people that I'm talking about are the people that make the decisions that if you get the contract or not. Yes, okay. Now, Judy said you have a contact in Prince George's County now, and that's me. <laughs> okay. Whenever y'all ready, let me know. Hey, I'm going to let you know. I'm looking at you. You're not the first person that said that. I know. Other people have said, yo, well, you're doing all this great work in D.C. You know You what? live in Prince George's County. Mm -hmm. I've been living in Prince George's County mm -hmm. the, the entire time that I've been in D.C. for 25 years. But, I mean, it's not a, it's not a disrespect thing. No, you know I no, love Prince no, George's, you know what? I'm, wait, you know I'm what? waiting. But listen, Prince George's County has some growing to do. But I want to get to um, how you positioned your business. Because let me just, let me just say this to, 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 to the people, right? Um, you created something that didn't exist. But it doesn't always have to be something that doesn't exist, that does, that does not exist. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is position yourself to uh, how you're going to set yourself apart, Right. Right, when, And then when you set yourself apart, you have to find out where those jobs are, those contracts are, what agencies is buying, what, what agencies are buying, what you're selling, right? Yes. And then what you have to do is, what else did you do? Because you know, you know the word that I'm looking for from you. Maybe not. Well, <laughs> one of the words was the R word relationships yes <laughs> i created relationships mm -hmm. with key people mm -hmm. you know um whenever you want to get something from somebody mm -hmm. it's always to go directly to the source mm -hmm. it's always smart to try to get close to the decision making people mm -hmm. as you possibly can mm -hmm. if you can't create a relationship with the individual mm -hmm. that is the decision maker, mm -hmm. try to find the person that's next to the decision maker. That's right. And some people say, well, look, man, <clears throat> I don't know Muriel Bowser, but you know what? You sure do got Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. You sure can like her photos. <laughs> you sure can repost her posts. Yeah. You sure can say good morning to her every day. That's right. That's you know, right. You can stalk them without oh, yeah, being Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You 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 start you know what I was there was a 
a guy that we had in the Music Industry Academy class last week by the name of Theo Brown. And he was talking about how artists can get their songs in the hands of big time producers or people like Drake. He said, slide in their DMs with your music. Ain't nothing stopping you from sliding in the DMs of anybody that you want to do business with. That's, you can do this. That's right. And you know what? The key here is once you start it, consistency. Because at some point, you're going to wear them down. At some point, they're going to notice you. But there's one more thing that I wanted to talk about that I wanted you to bring out. Certification. Getting your certification. Okay. Right? So, all right. So, um, a couple things. So, I do have a certification for my LLC, CIA Multimedia, uh, the company that I was doing, the social media, the video production, and the other stuff that had to do with uh, digital media. Mm -hmm. I do have a certification for Maryland for that. But mm -hmm. obviously, I'm not using it. I'm not using it because I have these two government contracts that don't require any certification at all. Okay. okay. Now, they're important for some businesses. Mm -hmm. But some businesses... You don't need them at all. Okay. It depends on the business that you're in. Mm -hmm. It's going to depend on what, what industry that you're going after. Some mm -hmm. of them are great to have these, these uh, certifications, but and they, 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 it takes a lot of time to get them and a lot of work. I mean, because you helped me uh, with, with Maryland, as a matter of fact, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah. You helped me yeah. and you walked me through the steps and the whole nine. But for some things, you won't need it. No, but what he's talking about is the um, your minority business enterprise certifications, small business enterprise certifications, disadvantaged business certifications. All of these certifications were put in place. So the state of Maryland has um, the MBE and DBE uh, certifications they put in place kind of to level the playing field. Okay? Yes. So when prime contractors... Once you get that certification from the state of Maryland and then Prince George's County has their own, I'm quite sure Baltimore County probably has, has a small business program. Um, I know DC has the CBE program. WMATA, which is Metro, has their DBE program. Virginia has Virginia SWAM and their DBE program. All of these programs were designed to level the playing field for minority companies and what it does, it, it what it what it does, it serves as partially. It serves as a marketing tool for your your company because once you obtain those certifications, your company name now becomes uh, gets listed on their directories. Each one of these directories. So I recommend getting them all because they're free, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, and and it puts it puts your company name on this directory that these prime contractors have to go and look at when they have to meet, when they're bidding on these big contracts and they have to meet these small business or minority business or woman business owner uh, requirements. And, and so, and then there you are, your company's name is there and they'll call you up and ask you for a quote for this part of their, this portion of this contract that they're gonna bid on. And, that, and, 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 and that's how I found my niche. But um, does it work for everyone? It, 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 if for, if you said that the contracts that you bid on didn't have any of those requirements. Nope, they but, didn't. But, they didn't at all. Mm -hmm. that, they did, that, they did that, not at all. I mean, that, as that, I said, they're going to have these certifications. Mm -hmm. It's great for some things. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, I prefer creating a relationship mm -hmm. with that company myself. Finding out who the individuals are that are pulling the strings, that make the decisions, and I try to meet those people because the reality of it is they'll put out the uh, RFA or RFQ or whatever it is mm -hmm. to say, hey, listen, we're looking for somebody to do X, Y, Z. But a lot of times they already know who they want to hire. Yes, that's true. There's, there's a word. I forgot mm -hmm. what the word for this is, um, but that happens too. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it's great to have these, these, these connections. But I, I would say the smart thing would, to, would be to do both. Mm -hmm. Which, get the certifications. If you feel like you need them, great. But also, you got to go face-to-face -face with these people. Hey, by, for anything that you want to do, mm -hmm. if you really want to do it, you should know who the individual is mm -hmm. that's making the decisions mm -hmm. that can help you get the contract. If you don't know who these people are, 
then you should not be in this business. Right. At all. That, that, in other words, you need to know, again, who's buying what you're selling, right? Yes. And yes. you need to go make nice with that person. You, yeah, absolutely. And if, you, and if you're wanting to get into the government contracting <laughs> arena, uh -huh. you need to be visiting. Each government agency has, the, has their own buying power, right? And they have their own needs. They, they buy with the purchasing card. They buy with um, uh, where, where you have to write proposals. And submit and submit your proposals and quotes and everything to them, um, but you need to be on their website, looking at their their procurement section and finding out what solicitations they have put out. Then the next thing that you should do is find out when those pre bid meetings are and go and attend them. Yeah, because when you're in there, you're in the room with the contract officer and a ton of other businesses that want to bid on the same contract that you're interested in. Even if you don't think you're ready to bid, just go and experience mm -hmm. it and see what it's like because you're going to learn so much more information is where you have an opportunity to ask all kind of questions about that particular solicitation and where your business may or may not fit in. It's not a waste of your time, I, you know, and, and, and then you can also build relationships not only with the contract officer, but the other companies that are in the room. Because sometimes your business may not be uh, B2C. It might right. be B2B. Yep. It's mm -hmm. going to depend on the type of business mm -hmm. that you're in. That is, that is a very important key. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because the reality of it is like the way industries are set up, they're different. The way they operate, the way they conduct business is totally different. And you're going to have to, to figure that out. But, mm -hmm. you know, the key word is relationships. I agree. I, agree. I mean, I, I bought a lot of lunches to people. And, and, and the other part about it is, is uh, I'm really big on intel. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm very big with, um, like, individuals that I know that are working in a particular place that I'm interested in going after, mm -hmm. finding out if I can't get to the person that's going to make the decision, you know, hey, man, let's go to lunch. <laughs> you know, hey, man, mm -hmm. let's do this. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have lunch, we'll talk business, and then they, you get inside information. Mm -hmm. And this is extremely important to do because every business, I don't care what business it is you have, you have to, your, your business has to be based off of research. Mm -hmm. You have to do your research about what the market needs, what the market wants. You just don't just start a business because, oh, I think that I'll just yes. open up this yes. or open up that. Yes. No, you, you want to fill a need if you want it to be able to survive and to be able to, you know, it, for it to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do that a lot. Mm -hmm. I do that a lot. I have a lot of friends and uh, that's another reason why when you're in business, it's just good business mm -hmm. to ball out and do really good bit. That's the other thing, too. Mm -hmm. Once you get in, you have to ball out. It's just, and what I mean by that is this. You have to provide a great service. Yes. Because your reputation is going to follow you everywhere that you go. Yes. And if you're doing great work and you are, are you're uh, exceeding people's expectations. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, man, I said I would do this, but I did this, and now I'm going to do this for you too. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is planning, a, you're, you're putting out good energy. Mm -hmm. And when you keep putting out good energy, mm -hmm. it's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what's happened to me. Mm -hmm. I spent all these years on the radio in D.C., going around to all these schools, talking to all these kids, speaking at these graduations, mm -hmm. you know, doing what God told me to do as far as being a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a service to my community, mm -hmm. and now it it built up this whole position mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about who Easy Street is. Mm -hmm. Because the other part of it is your business has to be trusted. You have to build that trust. Mm -hmm. Easy Street is trusted. He's never gotten in any trouble. He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. He came to my kid's school. I heard him speak before. He sends out incredible messages in the morning mm -hmm. about, you know, God and about spirituality and mm -hmm. motivation. I see him helping people. You know what? I'm going to give him a contract. Yeah. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because I can trust him. Mm -hmm. So all, the, all these things are very important, mm -hmm. and they all work together, too. Someone asked a question about um, why is it important to 
to what does an LLC do for your business? Can you answer that question? Okay, so LLC uh, keeps me from getting sued from somebody taking away all this stuff I got in my house. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's, it's like a shield. It operates as a shield for you. Like, say you, uh, you sell water bottles, okay? You sell this water bottle right here, and you came up with the company name, and it's selling out the yin-yang. But then one day somebody got sick off of your water and God forbid they died or mm -hmm. ended up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now they want to sue you. Okay. Mm -hmm. If your bottle company is owned by a sole proprietor, just by you as an individual, mm -hmm. they could take your house, they could take your car yep. and everything else around mm -hmm. you. But if it's an LLC, mm -hmm. you have a shield there in front of you. They can't take away your personal assets. Mm -hmm. They can only take away stuff that you gain for your business. Okay. Now, I've heard, though, they can a bit, they, that if they wanted to go after some of your personal stuff, they could, but it would, it would require them to have to jump through a whole lot of more legal hoops to do. Mm -hmm. So that's why you got to get an LLC. And the other part about that is this. The federal government, they're not, they're not going to enter in, into a, a contract with Easy Street. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're going to enter into a contract with Creative Solutions for, for you, LLC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's just the way that it works. So if you want to move up in business, you got to, you got to talk to, you got to, you got to, you got to have a business. You have to set yourself in a way that, you know, they understand the mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. and, to of, break, and to break it down a little bit more, to do business as a sole proprietor doesn't cost you anything. But at the end of but but come tax time, if you're an LLC, you have to pay in the state of Maryland, you have to pay three hundred dollars to for that personal property return. Right. And then whatever your jurisdiction taxes you on whatever property that you have under your business. So it costs you just a little bit of money. And now three hundred dollars is a lot of money, but it's a little bit of money to protect yourself. So absolutely you, worth it. You you and it is and 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 uh, and I think a lot of um, small business owners or people who are just starting out, um, they some of them don't want to spend money. You're gonna have to spend money to make money to establish yourself. So you took your you took your business and you went you you were going in one direction and then you pivoted. Yes went into a new direction and now it's brought you this whole new opportunity what what what's next for you okay so just for the record i pivoted twice okay okay two times pivot number one was me deciding that i just didn't want to be one dimensional and be on the radio and entertainment mm -hmm. okay because and I, this is not a disrespect to anybody that I know that's in the business, but I'll just say entertainment. Say, I, okay, say for a living, you decide all you want to do is entertain people on stage by singing. That's all you want to do. That's the only thing you do is you're on stage, you sing to people. That's the only way you make money. Mm -hmm. Are you making money now? No, you're not mm -hmm. because you can't have a concert because of the coronavirus, mm -hmm. right? You're out of business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are out of business. Mm -hmm. So how do you shield yourself from that? As an artist, maybe you sell merchandise. Maybe you also have, like Rihanna did, a makeup line. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you come... the. You get what I'm saying? Yep. You yep. find a way to make multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I didn't want to be the one trick pony and just do the radio thing. So I made a move to go in a direction that I knew that also I was passionate about, mm -hmm. something that, that the community needed and something that I really wanted to do that I, I mean, and I thought that was needed in the community. So that's the reason why I started the Academy. Mm -hmm. But the other pivot that I made was moving away from the original idea of doing CM Multimedia. Mm -hmm. You know, that was cool, and I still kind of do it, but the reality of it is me making videos uh, and, and storytelling through videos for companies that I was doing 
uh, for, for, for nonprofits and for other companies are the same things I use for my current business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I still use a lot of things that I was doing on the CM Multimedia side to help with what I'm doing for Creative Solutions for Youth. Because if you remember earlier, I told you this. I told you that everything that I was teaching, that I documented and made videos mm -hmm. and sit up to the top, and they saw those videos and they were like, wow, mm -hmm. you're doing this with the kids? Mm -hmm. Remember I said that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it all worked out. Yeah. It all worked out for mm -hmm. me to be able to use the skills that I, that I uh, pivoted away from in one thing to be able to help what I'm currently doing. Mm -hmm. And the visual content, boy, is king. People being able to see what you do and see the good work that you do, mm -hmm. it will sell you quicker than anything. That's right. Yeah. And that's one of the smartest things that I did. Everything that I do, you see a visual presentation of exactly what I said I would do and the outcomes that I said I would produce in the youth. So how, how, so, so how is this program working inside our... Uh, working for people who are re-entering back into society? Okay, so um, before COVID-19 struck, I was teaching this course out of two locations. My one contract was downtown at 458th Street in Northwest with disadvantaged youth that were under 18. Mm -hmm. The other contract with C. Sosa it's young adults. They're, they're people that are not juveniles. Okay. That was located at a, in their studios that I had, that I worked out of and produced songs out of and had my classes out of um, in Southeast by the big chair. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the C. Sosa contract work was on Friday. The DYRS work was the work on, that I did on Monday and Wednesdays for an hour. Okay. So that's pretty much what the flow was for me in what I what I was doing until COVID nineteen, okay. so COVID nineteen happened. Of course, you can't have class anymore. You right. can't gather people people together. So I was like, hmm. I had to pivot again. Mm -hmm. How do I continue to teach what I teach? I came up with a great idea. You know what? I'm going to use Instagram. Mm -hmm. oh. I I use Instagram to teach to do my sessions in the same place that you see me right now uh -huh. every Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday at 4.30. And I bring in special guests uh -huh. on the screen just like this to talk to my students, to answer their questions. They can come on this platform and perform their songs and everything. Okay. So, okay. again, mm -hmm. it goes back to what I said earlier about mm -hmm. adaptability. You mm -hmm. have to find, you have to figure it out and mm -hmm. find a way to keep the show going. I decided mm -hmm. to use Instagram. So a lot of other people, Flavine, how you doing? So a lot of people decided that, um, well, we want to use Zoom. We want to, you know, try to do our virtual classes uh, some other way through some Google and whatnot. But the problem was this. A lot of the kids didn't have computers. Some okay. of them didn't have the internet. But you mm -hmm. know what? They knew how to use Instagram all day long because mm -hmm. they're right there. Okay. So that's okay. another reason why I use Instagram. Okay. Okay. Now, but but it's and but this program is part of it's a it is a officially it's a government program with through your service, right? Yes. I I have the entity that I created under Creative Solutions for Youth mm -hmm. is the Easy Street Music Industry Academy. Okay. And uh, we have an official website, which is musicindustryacademy.com. You can be able to see videos of everything that, we've do, that we do. Mm -hmm. um, I've, been, I've been in business for the last three years. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see the music videos, the mixtapes that we produce. Uh, you'll find out about the job training that we do with students and everything else that we do. Mm -hmm. It's all on the website. Okay. 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 And the and the people that you're helping though with this program, I mean, because mm -hmm. you 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 mentioned that these are for people that that this program is for people who are coming back into society. So do they have to sign up themselves? Do the do, do does the how, how does what's the process? Okay, so for my federal government contract that I have with the mm -hmm. CSOS agency, uh, they have individuals that primarily they 
they oversee and they supervise, mm -hmm. you know, the the uh, the clients. And then they, are you interested in music? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm interested in music. Mm -hmm. Then they enroll in my class. Okay. Then they start coming to the class. Okay. Then they're learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's next? That's how the process works. It's a referral. Okay. But I will I will say this. Um. I'm about to take what I do with the Music Industry Academy mm -hmm. out of the government sector and go directly to, uh, directly to the general public. Okay. It's a, yeah, that, that is my next move. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that want to learn what I'm able to teach. Okay. Um, before COVID-19 struck, it was my plan to create uh, the Music Industry Academy music seminar that I would open up to the public, bring in national recording artists, mm -hmm. uh, local uh, artists to perform, to set up panels, to give the same information, mm -hmm. to teach the same thing that I teach in my classes with my students now, but in a setting. Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll, it'll probably happen in 2000, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, in 2021. Okay. But uh, that is something that I'm working on right now to take what I do to the general public because there's a need for it too. Mm -hmm. um, just for the simple fact, first of all, we have so much talent in the DMV area. It is ridiculous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is ridiculous. And these young brothers and sisters have the talent, but they don't know why. They don't know how to, they don't know how to cultivate it. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to, they don't, they don't have the information in it that, that they need to be able to help them grow as artists uh -oh. and they need guidance. And that's exactly what I provide. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you, so and when you do that, are you still going to have that service? You you're going to remove it completely from the government. You you you're not. No 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 no. I'll I'll still, I'll still continue mm -hmm. to have the way that I'm doing. It. Okay. Absolutely. I so, mean mm -hmm. I mean we already talked about this. Resist you cannot be a one trick pony. That's right. You can't just be doing one thing. You should mm -hmm. not be doing just one thing. Right. You got to you got to have that side hustle. That's right. You, That's right. You have to ha you have to have it because. In these situations, I know so many people right now that wish they had a side hustle. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's watching this right now, yo, yo, I pray and hope that you you figure out something. That there's more inside of you than what you do right now. That's right. That's you right. working for whoever it is you work for. Mm -hmm. um, there are other things that you are probably equally a pas equally passionate about mm -hmm. that you could make money off of, mm -hmm. but you just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, you have to do some self awareness, mm -hmm. find out what that is, mm -hmm. get you some books, mm -hmm. apply what you're learning, create you some relationships, mm -hmm. and get in there, man. And the thing real. about it, and the thing about it is, it's it's really easy to start a business. Anybody can start a business. Right. All you need to do is come up with a name, register it with your state or local jurisdiction, get an EIN number, open up a business bank account, create a website. Right. But where where what you have to do, dig deep inside of you or get from inside of you is where you're going with that business. And it has to be if you're going to start it, it's the process of discipline and becoming persistent, sticking with it. You have to be persistent and consistent because just starting a business and just saying you're going to do something, you got to, you know, you it's, it's easy to start, but it's also easy to step away from it. It's got to come from inside of you and, 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 and it's got to, you got to find your motivation to keep going because entrepreneurship is not for the faint. No, it's not. Absolutely. You're going to have some ups. You're going to have some downs. You're going to have a lot of challenges, just like COVID-19 is just another challenge in the day in the life of an entrepreneur. And, 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 and entrepreneurship teaches you who you are, you know, and if you, you know, for me, I have, I, I do have a full-time job, but I got my side hustles too. Right. And so, and, and, and but I'm never, I've never been a person who just has to do one thing. I'm always thinking or dreaming or what, or, you know, what have you, but your dreams don't become reality without hard work and entrepreneurship is as hard as it's come because you become responsible for your business. That's your baby and you have to take care of it. You have to nurture it. You have to grow it. 
I, my advice would be for people would be to make sure that you have a mentor. Find a mentor who's been where you are. I like to have um, uh, the people that I like to have around me. I want to make sure that I have someone who's more successful than me, someone who's where I'm at, and someone who's below me that I can help bring up as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm going to back up a little bit mm -hmm. and then I'm going to show you one more book, okay? Okay. And it ties into what you're talking about. Okay. So this book right here by Adam Markle, called Pivot, Pivot, The Art of Science of Reinventing in Your Career and Your Life, mm -hmm. was very instrumental mm -hmm. in helping me move away from radio into what I'm also doing right now. Now, does that mean I'm getting off the radio or you're not going to see me on television? No, that's not it. Mm -hmm. You know what? There, there's another thing. I, I pivoted again. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't just see me on the radio, but you see me on television too. Mm -hmm. that's, an, that's another pivot. Mm -hmm. that's, another, that's me making another move mm -hmm. into another arena. And I did it because I'm passionate about it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Key word, passion. passion. Book number two was this book right here, Marketing in the Era of Competition, mm -hmm. Change and Crisis. Boy. That's a perfect title for COVID-19 right there. Mm -hmm. Repositioning by Jack Trout. The mm -hmm. original book is Jack Trout and Al Reeves. It's called Positioning, about creating a position in someone's mind to be able to get the business. Mm -hmm. And the last book I'm going to show you is this. It's called Bleeding Out oh, wow. by Thomas Abt. He's going to be on my podcast in about two months. Wait a minute, say it again because I, my connection it's was bad. The name of the book is called Bleeding Out by Thomas Abt, okay? Okay. This book is The Devastating Consequences of, Consequences of Urban Violence and a Bold New Plan for Peace in the Streets. I bring that up because this. I created a business that's directly related to something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And that's the African-American community mm -hmm. and saving black lives. And that's what I'm doing that's awesome. with my two contracts. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to you this, whatever it is that you want to do, mm -hmm. whether service oriented or brick and mortar, you're going to need information, mm -hmm. read books, find out more about this, find out more about that. Whatever it is that you're trying to get into, you're going mm -hmm. to need to do your research so I you can know what you're getting into. I want you and to find ways to be able to help the people that you want to help. So um, the other want... part is the, is the P word is passion. Mm -hmm. The other best advice that I have for you is this. Get into business by finding out what it is you're passionate about and sell that passion. Because then when you're doing that, it's like you're not even working. Yeah, the work's going to be there, but mm -hmm. you're so passionate about this thing that mm -hmm. it doesn't even seem like work. That's like right. the radio That's thing. Right. That's right. I love music. I love music so much. Mm -hmm. Music is my first love, besides my mom and God. That I could, I could play music all day long for people and be happy and not get paid nothing. Mm -hmm. Whatever that thing is that you're passionate about, mm -hmm. try to find a way to make money off that, yep. and you'll be happy for the rest of your life. But 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 respond to there's a. Julie, the precious gem, she asked. Hey, London Savoy. Hey, love. She figured. She said she figured it out, but she she's figured out what she's. I guess she's figured out what she loves to do, but she just feels bad about charging people money to do what she does. Respond to that. Wow. So, I'll give it to you. Like and, this. and and we got six minutes. Okay, I'll give it to you like this. I'll give you the quick and the dirty, really quick. The people at McDonald's. Don't feel bad about giving you that Happy Meal when you walk up to that counter and pay for it, okay? The people at the front door at uh, whatever nightclub or place that you go to, they don't, or the place that you go buy a pair of shoes from, they don't feel bad about taking your money at all. They don't. This is business, okay? And regardless of what it is you do, the nature of business is an exchange of money and services or a product. If you're not doing that, you don't have business. And at the end of the day, you know, those feelings that you're talking about, you can't pay your rent with that. You can't pay your mortgage with that, your car payment. You can't pay your child care with that, with that, with that emotion at all. 
Think about that. Yeah. Think about what you could do with the money to help yourself and your community. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. We, as a people, especially in the time that we are in right now, the only way we're going to get out of this problem right now is as a people, as far as with the police situation and everything that's going on, is that we economically empower ourselves because the, uh, the revolution mm -hmm. is going to cost money, you guys. Mm -hmm. The revolution is going to cost. And I don't mean bullets. I don't mean, I don't mean bullets. Our people need help. Mm -hmm. And the only, you can't help them if you don't have the money. That's right. that's so that's another reason why. Get that money, help your family, and help your people. That's the only way that it's going to happen. Easy. I just really want to thank you for joining me tonight. You know, I knew that this was going to be a lively discussion because business is, is it, it sounds to me like what you're saying is it ain't never personal. It's business. <laughs> well, well, you know what? I will, you know what? There, there, there's, there's a time when that's true yeah. and there, there's a time when that's false. Right. Okay. It's, it's not true. Like the business that I do, to, to help my community, mm -hmm. that's personal. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all. Me out here with these young people trying to help them get their minds right so they don't mm -hmm. go out there and, and do dumb stuff to end up dead, you mm -hmm. know, in the streets mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's personal for me. Mm -hmm. That ain't got nothing to do with business at all. Mm -hmm. That's all personal. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Depends on what you're into it for. The, 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 the point that I would make to that, to that point that uh, Julie that that you that you've made is that um you know it's really great a lot there's a lot of people in this world that don't like their jobs can't stand what they do unhappy i've been not there. not passionate about it mm -hmm. not passionate about it nope and it, but it could be for different reasons it could be for whatever reason it could be because you have a a boss who sucks right i've been there done that but it is awesome when you are so good at something and you love doing it, why not be able to make money at it? That, yep. that makes it feel like it's just not work. And when you can do something like that and you can help somebody at, at the same time, they know, they know that you can't, you, you can't make a living. Yes, you've been there. They know you can't make a living without, uh, without, without making money. So, and don't let, and don't let anybody guilt you just because, and just because we're supposed to be supporting each other. You know, now the movement is support black businesses, support black businesses. And I believe in that wholeheartedly, but support black business, businesses does not mean discount. No, it doesn't. Right? <laughs> right? No, it doesn't. No, I mean, I, I will take care of people, but really, for real, for real, if you really want to support black businesses, Give them money just yep. like you would give them white folks your money. And the same way. Yep. Yep. Same way. Yep. Easy. This has been wonderful. I know I only got two minutes. And, you know, if you got some closeout words you want to give, so one piece of advice that you would give to a budding entrepreneur that's thinking about taking that leap of faith. One more thing I'm going to add right now, okay? This is it. Keep God first. That's right. Keep God first in your business. Mm -hmm. That's it. I have nothing after. Keep God first. You're yeah. going to be okay. Yeah. But be ready to grind it out. Remember all the things that we said. If you missed what we said earlier, I'm pretty sure that Denise is going to save this. Watch the whole thing. Yeah. Take notes. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime you know where to find me. Yeah. Everybody, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I want to thank Easy for taking time out of your evening to join me tonight. Anytime. All right. Appreciate you. All right. Good All right. Night. God bless. Bye. Bye. <laughs>